Hey everyone, welcome back. Fallout 76, man, what an absolute mess of a game. The sheer incompetence is actually incredible. Um, I mean, what other company could have two dramas, two of their major dramas be a cheap bag and a tube of plastic? I mean, I've got to hand it to Todd, Bethesda truly is a special studio. I mean, you know, meme tier as they are, um, but you know, in terms of their output, they certainly have been shipping landmark games for years. Sure, they have all had their problems, but no doubt their titles generally have captured imaginations and inspired players for years. Until recently, Fallout 4 was a noted decrease in the quality of their games from a role-playing perspective, and at the end of the day, they are RPGs. Fallout 76, well, it takes the biscuit. Bar some new enemies, it's just a big open world map, some net code to make it work, and a host of boring MMO missions, some copy pasta building mechanics from Fallout 4, and uh, no NPCs and no narrative. At best, it's a very niche game in the Fallout world, but that is not what they sold to players when they talked about it. And rather amazingly, it's also literally not what they sold to players either because the thing was barely functioning in terms of performance, even improving on the glitches that Bethesda, at this, at this stage, seem to actually see as features. Um, the sheer incompetence that you see through all aspects of this game are astounding, and I mean, I try to be fair to people in this channel, but they are. And it's, you know, it's messing up the small things, even such as the canvas bag, and then messing up the responses to things like that, such as giving people who paid a large sum for that bag a very paltry sum of atoms for the game's premium currency. It's almost hard to summarize the utter symphony of incompetence that's been going on here. Now, I'm more than happy to explain why things happen, even if doing so isn't popular, but man, that Dennis Durkin 15 million sign-on bonus, that almost makes more sense in this whole bloody situation. I mean, wow. So, here's the deal. Being a multiplayer game with a shared, you know, world and an economy, well, the economy's really important and that progression forms much of Fallout 76's gameplay loop. Doing missions to get better gear so that you can do more missions to earn even more gear. Now, what if I told you that if you logged into WoW, you walked backwards, you spun around three times and headbutted your monitor, that you would be transported to a mystical realm of fortune, somewhere where every bit of the game or every bit of gear in the game was just waiting for you. Every item, everything. You'd tell me that was hilarious and silly, um, and that could never possibly happen in a game made by, uh, you know, a company who was making an MMO with a shared economy and player trading. Well, my friends, enter one Todd Howard, the utter meme god himself. Now look, again, Todd has been responsible in part for so much great work, but one day he said the, sa the famous line, it just works. And we've been laughing ever since. So what's happened? Well, yeah, it's came to light that Fallout 76 has one of these rooms with everything in it every item in the game, and actually the game's only NPC, but even better, it contained items that had not been released, presumably things for future updates. Now, this had been discovered quite some time ago, but the information was kept secret. People were not willing to share their methods, and indeed, this even led to some enterprising individuals selling things on eBay for real money, just like we were back in the Diablo 2 days. Imagine what it would be like buying the Titanforged Arcano Crystal of your dreams from eBay. Uh, yeah, I mean, wow, how insane. Now, being real, I don't think people actually care about their progression in Fallout 76 nearly as much as they would in, say, something like World of Warcraft. But still, as time went on, knowledge of this became more and more well-known, and uh, then it did the news rounds during this, um, during this year, hitting all the big sites and all the pundits. And we all had a right laugh. I mean, at this stage, having a laugh at Fallout 76 is like going to the bar with your friends, just that, you know, it's a bit lonely and sad, but hey, it's still kind of entertaining. Well, Bethesda finally have decided to do something about this. And, you know, the myriad of other bugs, including item duping, again, in their game with an economy. So what they've seemingly done is moved the secret developer room that contained all the items in the game to a different place where you could not access it. Now, people have actually reported being able to get there, but they have not been able to interact with the item, so it seems like they pretty much just threw in a quick fix. As for the people who exploited this, well, it seems like those items are being either removed from those players or those players are being banned. Uh, and Bethesda said, if you find a bug, stop immediately and contact support. Now, to us MMO people, it seems so normal. Right, but to regular gamers, especially those who played Bethesda games, it's actually a different situation. You see, for them, glitches are silly fun things that you can do for a laugh. They don't have the same concerns about the game health that the, you know, that the MMO people do, about the economy. 
And this is something that's been embraced by Bethesda fans especially, with things like dev rooms being full of items being totally normal. In any of their recent Elder Scrolls or Fallout games, you could easily get into the dev room if you wanted to get some silly items to mess around with. And being a sandbox game, it made sense. It just felt like you were messing around with the sandbox systems, and because it was not online, it did not hurt anyone. It was just like using cheat codes back in the day for a laugh. Well, with 76 uh, primarily being played by those players, for whom it was really just Fallout 4, but with friends, I mean, ideally that's what they wanted, this whole thing is a change in direction. So what's next for the game? Well, I've heard that they're looking at uh, doing a more hardcore PvP mode and continued bug fixes, but past that, honestly, it is so hard to see how they can salvage this one. But it is kind of easy to see why things panned out this way. It really is clear that this game is just a Fallout world, but without the Fallout content. From a development process, it certainly seems like things went down that way, with additional help coming in for the netcode aspects of the game and getting it to go on multiplayer. Now, here's the thing. The Gamebryo engine has came under a lot of flack, and I think it's likely for decent reasons. Now, this actually caused a minor situation between YouTuber Yongya and Kotaku journalist Jason Schreier a while back, and I think it's something that sort of highlights how, to most people, game engines are just a spooky black box. Well, to me, they're not. Why? Well, I programmed my own engine in university, as primarily focusing on rendering, um, and I've also done some minor work in Unreal, and my company primarily develops in Unity, with me having done a lot of programming with that. Um, and I've actually also done some Skyrim modding, so I also have a bit of experience with Gamebryo stuff. On the whole, the engine debate went down something like this. One side was basically saying that engines are just a collection of tools built around a um, built around or integrating with a sort of core set of technologies, and the other side seemingly thinking that engines are just this one monolithic thing, and that if an engine is bad, it should be binned, thrown away. It's a bit like people saying that WoW has a 15 or 20 year engine, and maybe not understanding how the engine as it is now really like, and it's, you know, it's, it's quite modern and bears very little relation to its original form. Although, I mean, that being said, yes, if you were to develop a new engine from scratch for WoW, probably would be nice, um, at least for the developers and the workflow. But anyhow, it seems like we have really equal problems between the Gamebryo engine, but also the company policies. It seems to me like they have very robust content creation tools for their engine, and indeed, that seems to be why they said that Elder Scrolls VI and Starfield are sticking with it. Their tools, they say, allow them to create massive worlds and iterate on them really quickly. It's likely that that's very true, and on the whole, it seems like they must have great tools and that this engine does specific things fantastically and that the team are very well uh, used to working with it, and their internal processes are used to it as well, meaning that if their key metric is how fast can we pump out a quality world, then it must be an awesome engine. However, other aspects of that engine do seem to be outdated. There are bugs that have existed for a very long time, and that does suggest to me that some of their origins are really quite deep in the engine. Again, though, I don't know how the engine is architected. For lack of a better sort of way of explaining it, does it have a modular structure that is wide but shallow? Or is it really deep and hierarchical such that, um, you know, if there is a core problem, it's really deep in and hard to hunt down? So really, the engine probably can be polished up, and chances are that switching over to Unreal would be a massive engineering project. Now, I don't know their company structure, but if any department over there is understaffed, come on, it's bound to be engineering. Now, the next problem is also quite clear, internal processes. And I see this as being a mixture of one of three things, or, well, it's either one of three things or a mixture of all of them. First, they have underdeveloped quality control processes. Second, they, uh, the publisher has way too much sway, meaning that um, they you know, are forced to ship before they're ready. And third, their standards are too low. Personally, I think it's likely a bit of all of those things that just bites them in the ass every time. But while it might bite them in the ass, the people who really lose out are customers. Ultimately, the Fallout 76 situation is utterly unacceptable. In theory, this is something the market should sort out itself. So far, we know the Fallout 76 has not sold fantastically, having had deep sales early into its life. Will this apply to future Bethesda titles? I can't say for sure, but I certainly do think the player should hold off before they purchase, or at the very least, they should make their purchase on a platform like Steam or the Epic Store, a platform that has a clear refund policy. Ultimately, companies respond to market pressures, and since the market is driven by consumers, it is up to us to put on that pressure. The system only works if we engage in it 
and stand by our principles rather than be apathetic, for the only principles that will be maintained are those which we draw the line at. And that is my core message when it comes to, I think, being a responsible consumer. At the end of the day, they'll always try to get as much from us as they can. And we can only give, you know, we only give them as, as much as we're willing to give. If we're willing to give too much, they'll keep on taking, right? So the way that the whole system works out should be that we respect, you know, ourselves. And if they try stuff that's a bit too shifty, you know, they, they get the slap and they don't get their money. And that maybe, you know, means they don't do it again. And I think a large part of this industry in the eyes of many gamers slipping is because historically we've not been particularly good at sticking by our principles. Because at the end of the day, if you're working a 50 hour week and maybe you've got a family, you're busy as hell. Yeah, sure, Mass Effect 3 has done this terrible thing with its DLC practices, but damn it, it's Mass Effect 3. I want to play that. I've worked 50 hours this week. I've done a bunch of social functions. I've been roped into some stuff with in-laws that I didn't want to do. You know, these are my few hours to enjoy games. And sure, there is a grand principle that I could stand up for. But at the end of the day, it's my life. And I've got to have fun. So I've got to play Mass Effect 3. And I think it's that response that just sort of perpetuated things slipping a little bit. How do we deal with that? Well... I think it probably is worth making those sacrifices and standing by our principles, but at the end of the day, I can't lecture anyone how to spend their time. That is everyone's individual decision that they've got to come up with themselves. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. I'll see you next time.